This is James Randi, and you're listening to The Skeptic Zone. Welcome to The Skeptic Zone, the podcast from Australia for science and reason. Here are your hosts, Richard Saunders and Stefan Soika. Hello, Richard. Hello, Stefan. Hello, Stefan. Are you there? Can you hear me? I, I think I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. And I'm here as well. How are you? Where are you? I'm in Melbourne. I'm in Sydney. I'm in Sydney. I'm in Melbourne. It's quantum, isn't it? It's very quantum. We're both sitting here together in Sydney and Melbourne at the same time. On two different days. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Oh, my God. We're at least we're in the same time zone. I, I'll buy that. Okay. All right, in I'll this universe. In this universe. In this universe. Okay. Well, it's great to be back. I haven't seen you for so long, Richard. You, you are looking younger and younger every day. Gee, thanks. Cause I, <laughs> <laughs> I had my birthday a couple of days ago in a couple of days. Oh, did you really? Yes. A couple of days ago in a couple of in days. A, yes. So we, we're pre-recording this next week. We are. I mean, we're pre-recording this, but it's the Skeptic Zone, episode number 215. No way. Yes way for the 1st of December, 2012. Oh. <sighs> And I'm in Melbourne, of course. And well, I'm I here, will be. In, and, and I'm here sitting with you in Sydney. In Melbourne. In Sydney. And Melbourne. Uh, <laughs> because I'm in Melbourne for the Australian Skeptics National Convention. National Convention. Yay. So it's going to be a huge show then. It's going really well and it will be going well soon too. <laughs> <laughs> it will be special the pre-records that you did next uh, week. <laughs> we should stop stop this. this. I'm getting confused. I don't know about our poor listeners. I especially confused, especially because it's been a while since I've been actually in the zone. I don't yeah. know, where where have you been all these last few weeks? I've been zoning. I was in California, of course, zoning oh. in California. And I've been getting, I'm going to be zoning in California in a few weeks. Again. Really? Yes. Uh, goodness, because I've just been sitting here in Sydney and Melbourne doing pretty much nothing. Oh. And I'm really disappointed in you for 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 for, for ignoring me for so long. Well, so, uh, someone's got to go around zoning around. They in do. And, and I've just been in counselling. That's all I've been doing, <laughs> just trying to get over it. Uh, but yeah, we, we, the, the, the convention is on. Yeah, it's on. Who's here? What's happening? Tell me all about all it. All sorts of people are here. It's really wonderful, or it will be soon in a few days when I fly down to Melbourne. But I was just on the line just before we began to record. I was just having a quick word to DJ Grothy, who's just arrived in Melbourne oh, as we yeah. record. Hey, hey, hey. He's with James Randi, and um, I guess they're doing well after their flight, which is great. Right. But the, his, the, his plane didn't crash next week, did it? It well, didn't. No, he, so he's actually arrived yesterday. Next week. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's good. Well, welcome to Australia, DJ. You know, you know, in Star Trek, they have these guys from the future called the Temporal um, Police or something, okay. and they come down and say, "Stop messing around with the timelines." I know it's very difficult, isn't <laughs> it's it? Very difficult. It gets confusing. Anyway, the, in, the the exciting thing is coming up on this week's show. We have mm-hmm. a report from Maynard's Meet and Greet. Maynard's oh. Dirty Disbeliever, No Agenda Malays, Skeptic Zone oh. Party. <laughs> we had in Brunswick on Wednesday night, which, yeah. uh, which will be and is fantastic and was fantastic. <laughs> Highlights from that. All sorts of people came along. Also on this week's show, uh, a special Dr. Rachie reports. Dr. Rachie was on the project. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait, how long ago? Well, t- she was just recently? Just, or, or, just oh, re- you talking about like after we pre-recorded no, this? I, no, she was before even we pre-recorded oh, this. Oh, right. I, just, saw, I think yeah. I saw a Facebook post about that. She was indeed. And that's online. If you if listeners go, Google the Project uh, Network 10 or the Project TV uh, and go back through the video archives, they oh. can see Dr. Rachie. But we have the audio. Oh, great. have the audio. Because I, I, I missed that, so I will look forward to it. Because I, the recent story here in Australia is doctors take aim at vaccine objectives. So, I mean, there's really, there's a lot of doctors out there. They've had enough. They've had enough, and they're becoming more and more concerned that our rates of immunization are going down. I know. Many of them have, have sussed the fact, but it's because of these rat bags online. Mm. Uh, no offense to Peter Bowditch, the good rat bag, <laughs> the bad <laughs> rat bags, that the moon, moon bats, I've heard, heard them. Moon called. bats. Moon bats. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, who are encouraging people course, not to get vac- not, vaccinated? Not to be vaccinated. Yeah, and there's people who are now saying that that, that they shouldn't. You know, the teachers and, and and principals are are getting concerned that they they can't admit kids to their school because they're not being vaccinated. And there's there's all sorts of um, controversies arising, no. and people getting furious about it. And you know, other parents going, if you if 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 you're letting anti-vaccine kids into my into my kid's school, I'm not bringing my kid to school. It's getting a bit a bit bit of a it's a big a issue. Right? Enough people out there, enough of the medical profession are now getting seriously worried that they've. Uh, there's a new booklet that has been released, and I'll certainly be linking to that on the Skeptic Zone uh, show notes. But yeah, Dr. H, was asked to go on the project to, um, mm. to talk about this, so that's coming up. 
That is the power of the skeptic show. zone. It is. I know her profile. Her, I mean, the the project. Sure, it's a national show and with, <laughs> with millions of viewers. But but the skeptic zone is what 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 got her there. It was her launch pad? Of course, <laughs> of, of course it was. And speaking of um, vaccination and things. I was just showing you before we turn the microphone mm. on my work in progress of the vaccination chronicles. And I must say, I'm very impressed with it. That's right. A bit of a documentary about vaccination. You should a bit of history in I've there. Got it right here. It's interviews yep. with people who actually had polio and uh, in families with polio. Some of the, uh, the, the the good old days where it was just no, normal for, for a whole bunch of kids at school to be walking around in calipers. That's the sort of the, the days that we want the to go back to. The good old days. Don't oh, you miss them? The golden days. The golden of, of era. Polio. The yeah. golden era. And of course, uh, uh, this documentary covers other things like hooping cough. And things oh, like that. yes, yes. But as you can it's see, I'm good. just showing Stefan now on my little laptop here the timeline. It's got, we've got some interviews. I've got a few more interviews to do. Yeah, it's looking great, um, though. I've got a sequence here I filmed in a graveyard. <gasps> oh, yeah, that's not, I'm, not, I'm not sure. so happy. But, but you've got some go. good music for it, I hope. I hope so. <laughs> the Munster's be, theme I'll or be, something. No, I'll be tapping you on the shoulder for some good music, <laughs> oh, yeah. I think. Oh, yeah. And I've got some newspaper clippings, which I've sourced online here. Mm. More Sydney polio cases. This is all from, from many years ago. Of yeah, course. yeah. Uh, infantile paralysis, one death, 14 new cases. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was huge. I mean, I, not not to give away my age too much, but, <laughs> but I had you know, your schoolmates who, who, who got around in calipers. Um, back in the 70s so it, it's actually quite recent and they're trying to bring it back it's it's frightening anyway we'll be having a chat to dr h a special dr h reports mm. together with fun and games from the early part of the convention and maynard's meet and greet that's uh. the story of today's show but before we get into the show i thought i'd mention to the listeners i can't remember if i've done it before i'm here at serious media group where we're recording this interview of course and somebody I used to work with in this very room when there were oh. monitors here and it looked a bit different was mm. a certain young lady named Yi Ying Lu. That's right? exactly right. And listeners, Yi Ying, who is a very good friend of ours, I haven't seen her for a few years now, mm -hmm. she designed Fail Whale. Fail Whale, yes, she did. How about that? She did, and she did indeed. And, and that little image has, uh, has, has just turned our whole career into an well, explosion. I, I keep a tr track of her progress on the internet, no, mm. on Facebook and her website, and she's done the most amazing <laughs> stuff. She did stuff lately in Las Vegas Las with Vegas? Star Trek, I think. Yeah, yeah, she's got a thing called walls360.com yeah. where it's sort of these removable sticker giant pic uh, pictures you can stick. And they've licensed out all these uh, licensable brands and names and Star Treks and all these things. And, uh, yeah, and, and they're printing them and posting them all around the world. And the thing, she got her start right here. Yeah, right here at Serious Media Group. Isn't that incredible? Uh, and yeah. she's a lovely lady. She's, she's fantastic. The gig just really funny. And she was trying to teach me Chinese and she's, just, uh, she's, she's really a, funny. She's a amazing and and that the, the fail whale was actually called lifting up a dreamer or something it was really? actually a, a little picture that she just drew for a friend who she missed because she they, they were in london or something wow. and uh and and the guy who owned twitter found it on iStock photo and and bought it and used it for the you know the twitter is overloaded over capacity yes thing, yes and yes. became a massive uh, viral meme and people have it tattooed on them oh, yeah. that. it's, it's insane <laughs> So but, there you go, a little bit of trivia. A little trivia. Yi Ying used to work in this very room. Big hello to Yi Ying if yes. he's listening. Designing packaging for safety clothes. <laughs> <laughs> she did. Really? <laughs> yeah. But they were fun days. They were fun days. Well, we've got some fun days ahead. We've got some fun reports coming up. Why don't we get stuck into the skeptics? Let's, Let's do it. Let's do it's it. It's quantum, but we'll do it anyway, twice. <laughs> That's so confusing. <laughs> Here's Maynard's spooky action at a distance. We're coming to you from the uh, Gold Club Lounge at the Virgin uh, Terminal here at Sydney Airport. Uh, yes, last time I was here, I was here with Dr. Rachie, and uh, she's since been barred from here, so <laughs> it's nice to be back. I'm here with Maynard. It's uh, Wednesday the 28th of November, and we're just 
sitting back enjoying a diet coke or two and uh, waiting for our flight down to melbourne what an exciting time it's going to be it is it's going to be a different time again for me because i'm getting introduced to all these sort of skeptic things through the years and of course there was uh, the, the original tam that i went to in sydney there was tam las vegas and now this is going to be something completely different all together all you know completely well, yes and no. Yeah. Yes well, and no. I mean, what happens at these annual conferences? Is there any sort of backroom deals done? Is there <laughs> usually are there things that people can't say? Is there an elephant in the room? You know, there are, but I can't say them. No, oh, exactly. Because I'm really looking forward to this because there's going to be some controversy there. I'm sure. I'm but, sure. Well, if there's not, I'm sure you'll make some. So there's going to be controversy. There's going to be controversy. And it's going to start here in the lounge because we're going to drink all the diet you coke. You know what? There'll be none left. I've finished my diet coke, and oops, I've just dropped the lid off my box here. I've finished my diet coke, and as it's happens to be my birthday, I just might go down to the bar there and get myself a nice glass of champagne. I Why think, not? I think you should now, because you've only got a very limited time before that diet, the aspartame you just uh, absorbed into your body <laughs> turns into formaldehyde <laughs> briefly before you get the champagne, so make your move now, Richard. I'm going to do that, and then uh, we'll be off to Melbourne. Yeah, okay. Now, we are in the noisy meetup that's going on here. We're all having a great time. There's uh, Skeptic Zone fans everywhere. Not so many Dirty Disbelievers fans, but I'm here with Terry. Terry, what's your role and why are you here tonight? I'm the president of the Australian Skeptics Victorian branch and I'm the co-convener of the Australian Skeptics National Convention, which starts on Friday night, the 30th. That means you've been incredibly stressed, you've been dealing with lots of emotional people, there's been phone calls in the middle of the night, your life has been hell. Yes. Uh, uh, look, it's in, I'm dealing with about 50 emails a day at the moment related to the conference. I sort of be, I'll be, I'm looking forward to the conference starting so I can actually relax a little bit and enjoy myself. Now, I mean... Since the international people have arrived, uh, we've been having a, a really good time. We, um, we met with Randy and DJ and Brian uh, at the airport, got them to the hotel, had a really fantastic dinner last night at La Notte in Carlton, and today we took them to the Hillsville Sanctuary, the Hillsville Wildlife Sanctuary, which has become a bit of a tradition with the Victorian sceptics now for international guests, and uh, we had a lot of fun, and, now here, and here we are at the pub. Did they meet any of our traditional smelly koalas that we have? They did. The, the, the koalas were a particular success, I've got to say. They're very stinky overseas. This is a very stinky animal. Yeah, well, what particularly impressed the overseas guests was how the koalas had a great ability to just sit there and do nothing and be sitting precariously balanced on very small limbs of the tree and not fall off. So they took a lot of photos of that, which was really interesting. Look, the, the less they did, the more interesting the koalas were. Look, they, they'll see, they'll, they give a slow loris a run for its money any day of the week. What's a slow loris? It just, it just sits there, it just doesn't matter. It's, I, it's, it's, it's a little bit more active than a, a three-toed sloth. Oh, OK. Yeah, well, one koala moved around a bit, but it was interesting that of all the things that fascinated them, they saw dingoes and platypuses and stuff and snakes, and they were, but the, the, the koalas doing nothing was, was a highlight. However, one of the problems we had was that when we were designing the conference, we drew up a wish list of who we would like to get. Just, just in your wildest dreams, imagine who you would like to get and we'll work through that wish list. And number one on the wish list was Randy and we, we approached them and he said yes. And then, oh, and, and then, you're all great, now we've got now, to come up with the money. That's, then, now what are we going to do with this? He said yes, he's coming. <laughs> and, and, and then not long after he said he was coming... Uh, basically, DJ and, and Brian uh, volunteered themselves. So, we thought, oh, we got three of them, which is actually fantastic. But it, it made it a different sort of conference. So, in terms of the logistics of it and that sort of stuff. So, so we've got a, a sort of a slightly bigger deal. So, it's kind of a, it's a cross between conferences we've had in the past, where you have say 200 people compared to Tam Oz, Tam Oz in Sydney, where there was six or 700 people. We're somewhere over the 300 mark. Uh, at the moment, we've got over 300 people coming, and in the next few days, you know, it might get up to uh, a little bit more. So it's a, it's a bigger conference than we've organised before. Okay. So you've got some internal restructuring to perhaps have a bit of a think about as a challenge. <laughs> so, like, I, I work full-time, for example, and if I could get paid to do this, it would just be fantastic. I would love it. I've, I, I've never had so much fun in my life. I oh, mean, I've, same here. Yeah, yeah it's um, great, isn't it? I've, I've been president in Victoria for this is my seventh year coming up, and I just absolutely love it. And, and the people you meet and everything is fantastic. But 
it's all done sort of after hours and stuff and, and I'd love to do more of it and really get my teeth into some more of the issue. The other issue, of course, um, one of the things we have been involved in quite a lot is um, the, the, the creeping teaching of Wu in universities, which I know Tim Mendham wrote an article about for, um, for the magazine and Ken Harvey's been involved in quite a few people, you know, the chiropractic and, and, and stuff at La Trobe University and Victoria University... So some of those issues. So, so, so one of the really encouraging things has been the formation of the Friends of Science and Medicine organisation. So they're going to have a presence at the conference and they'll, they'll be presenting at the conference. Oh, good. Well, look, uh, so what do you hope to uh, do after the conference is over? Have a good rest <laughs> or go, well, I'm very self-satisfied after that? Uh, what are you hoping to get out of it? Uh, look, uh, I've taken two weeks off. Good lie down. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that was the plan. I took two weeks off. I took, I've taken a week off before the conference and I've taken a week off after the conference to relax and have a good lie down. Well, look, congratulations on what I'm sure will be a great conference, and I hope you hope you raise to these challenges after you've cleaned out the house and had a good lie down. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I guess the other thing is we're just trying to promote the idea that scepticism is fun and enjoyment, you know, that it's, it's stimulating and fascinating, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of humour and, and good-natured stuff and just keeping in touch with people from the different states and different countries. Uh, my, my other uh, aim for next year, personally, is I want to go back to the States and I want to go to Austin, Texas, where I went to last year and, and uh, get stuck. It's the live music capital of the world. Oh, right. Okay. It's, I went there after Tam in Las Vegas last year and uh, best week I've ever had. My favourite city in the world, just about. And uh, Austin has the highest percentage of PhDs per head of population of any, of any city in America, in the States. Uh, it also is the live music capital of the world. It, it's a sort of liberal, progressive, slightly left-wing kind of city. Uh, it's, it, uh, it's an enclave. It's like a sea of sanity and an isle of madness in Texas. It's also, it describes itself as a drinking town with a university problem, and it's where Andrew Wakefield lives. He's gone there. So it's a little bit tolerant of woo, too. So anyway... That's my plan next That's year. Is, fun is there, to get back you? to Austin, Texas. Yeah, That's the plan. Let me tell you, it is pumping here at the uh, Skeptic Zone meetup. Uh, look, uh, I can think over 300 people have turned up, uh, none of them with any money. It's uh, going to get ugly by the end of the night. Catherine, you've come along here. What have you come along for you for? Uh, I wanted to get out of the house, actually. <laughs> ah, trouble at home. Uh, no, I've got two young kids and, and haven't had much of a chance to get out. Um, and it's been interesting. They're only uh, they're one and a half and four and a half. And the woo around anything to do with kids is amazing, starting with, with pregnancy or even pre-pregnancy. Um, pregnancy, all the, the woo stuff around that. And then you get into the uh, vaccinations and all that kind of thing. And I, I've had to bite my tongue in a lot of forums... Because there's still so much out there, you know, going on with the uh, homeopathy and. Let me guess. Um, did you mention teething rings? Is that one of the things you've come up against yet? The teething rings. Um, is that those? Their particular type of ring, and they're supposed yeah. to be. And, and the baby can wear it as a bracelet around its neck. Yeah. And yeah, I have seen those. And it's supposed to be amber because amber gives away something. But most of the ones are normally yeah. just plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I ha- I have read about those, but I haven't never got one. <laughs> okay. So what's the one that really annoys you? Or what, what's the one that where other mothers come up? To you and they say something and you might argue with them and then they look at you like you're not a proper mother? Oh, good question. Um, online, it's it's the uh, homeopathy. Um, it's Because it's such a, a dangerous topic, we're not just talking about you know, teething rings or um, whether colic um, medicines work or what colic actually is. We're talking about babies' lives. And uh, well, children's lives and adults' lives too. So um, that gets me because it's 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 close to home now, particularly having kids, and um, it's just it's just dangerous and it's it's stupid. <laughs> but but, uh, but uh, arguing with other mothers online, it must get emotional very quickly. Yes, it does. Every, everyone uh, wants to protect what they think is right because if someone is challenging that, that that means they're doing something wrong with their children, and you can't get closer to home than that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, and so what, what do you think is the role of, of the so-called sceptic movement to fight this? Because a lot of people uh, see, it, yeah, it's, it's hard. Sceptical mothers. I think <laughs> that, that sounds great, doesn't it? <laughs> New podcast. Hmm. Mm. Um, 
Oh, well, I mean, it's, it all comes down to education. Um, there's a lot of people, I think, I suppose, I'm coming to understand that there's people who are at the extreme of anything, really. Um, you're not going to change their minds. No matter how much logic you talk at them, it's when it comes down to well, they emotionally believe and it's their sacred cow, they're not going to move. Um, but hopefully in that conversation or argument, um, there may be some people kind of on the borderline who go, hang on a minute, I didn't, didn't know that, which is kind of where I was a while ago when I was, I was big into chiropractic. And, you know, doctor explained it, sounded very scientific, um, and I learnt more about it, basically, and, and, um, and from there learnt about, you know, homeopathy and, and everything else. Um, but, yeah, um, I, I'd like to see more things done on a legal standpoint, which is starting to happen with some things. I don't think people should legally be able to, for example, sell homeopathic, homeopathic um, vaccinations because that's a medical thing and even if they're making other claims and getting around it with, you know, they're registered but not, you know, whatever, um, it's, it's something they shouldn't be allowed to do, I think, because if you get all the facts right, this is how it should be. Although, and then you get into freedom of, you know, personal freedom and that kind of thing, so... Well, look, what have you found as the handy website as a mother you'd recommend to other people? Ooh, um... Basically, uh, there's a lot of um, hospital websites which have really good information. Um, just basically, you know, the science-based ones. I've actually gone to the, the Cochrane Review site quite a lot um, to look at... So, Because people often say, oh, there's this study about this. Um, or the, now they're changing it back to start solids at four months or three months or six months. How can we believe anything they say because they keep changing their minds? But if you go and have a look at the overall research, and, and um, yeah, I think that makes that can make a big difference. Well, I wish you luck online there, you know, and, you. and don't stay up late. I mean, you're getting enough, you're, you're suffering from lack of sleep as it is with kids. Oh, I Perhaps am. you don't need to stay up arguing with people on the internet because they're yeah. wrong, because that's a never ending story. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting better at backing off and, and picking my battles. Well, uh, listener, we've uh, come to a back lane in Brunswick. Not the first time I've been in this lane, and it does bring back many happy late-night memories. Mm-hmm. But, um, oh, there's the sound of a Melbourne tram going past. And uh, we're here with a member of the uh, JREF who has a very cool job title on his card. Yes, I am uh, Brian Thompson. I am the JREF's outreach coordinator. And uh, is that a, a chalk outline of a body? <laughs> I think it is. And uh, we went out for a couple of years, and she was great. Oh, okay. And and she, uh, looked, she looked like she was a lot of fun. I'm just sorry that it, it had to come to this. <laughs> and it's in different places as well. Hey, now, being outreach, I, I find the biggest problem the sceptic movement has is explaining what it is to some people. Mm-hmm. Because you say, oh, they're sceptical about, and they're sceptical about what? And you go, well, they support science and critical thinking. And people start to go, my brain hurts, critical thinking. So what, what is the biggest challenge with the outreach? Uh, that is the biggest challenge, and I've found that the way to get around that is to not bother really explaining to people what skepticism is, to basically just show by example. So we deal with, as skeptics, all sorts of topics that are interesting to a wide variety of people, believers and non-believers. Everything from UFOs to Bigfoot to ghosts uh, to all these other topics that the average person is inc- incredibly interested in. That's why you see all these TV shows about all these things. Now, these TV shows that they're given are not necessarily the most skeptical, but they're just never presented with that information. But they'll show up for the topics. Now, and What do you reckon is the worst example of a, the Woo TV show you've seen recently? For me, it's got to be chasing UFOs. Lots of running, jumping, standing still, mostly at night. Um, <laughs> and I find that a very odd kind of show. Um, is there one that you go, oh, every time you see it? Um, yeah. yeah, I think that uh, my least favourite is the show. I don't even know if it's even on anymore. It may have been cancelled recently. It was called Paranormal State. And um, it was basically a ghost hunter show, but it, it starred uh, Chip Coffee, who's this medium in the United States. What a cool name. He's the worst person on earth. <laughs> He's this guy who goes around, and he had another show called Psychic Kids, where he would go to kids who are scared of the dark and tell them it's because you see demons and you're a psychic. And uh, oh, That sounds helpful to their development. Oh, it is. It is it's very, very, very much so. But uh, on Paranormal State, he would team up with these kids from Penn State University who were just, you know, amateur ghost hunters like everybody else's. But they were particularly ridiculous. They had these 
fake storylines about how the main guy was being stalked by this evil spirit his entire life and every time they would go to a haunted house he would think that he heard from this evil spirit like they made this whole ridiculous plot line through the entire show that's just so crazy and the people that are on the show are just so so terrible at what they're doing that it's it's almost fun to watch. Mm. It's craptastic, I believe, is the word you're looking for. It is craptastic and uh, psychologically damaging tastic. So how do you counter that with the outreach from the JREF? We've got to make better stuff. Uh, that's really the main thing, is that we've got to present our point of view in a way that's just as entertaining and just as compelling as these other shows. And... Uh, and some people have risen to that challenge and some people have not. But I, I, people tune into these things to be entertained. And that's what we have to keep in mind. That's what I think is unique about the James Randi Educational Foundation. And that's sort of the legacy of Randi. Randi's not an academic. He started his life as an entertainer. And that's, he still is. He's, he's about 50 feet away from us right now, probably <laughs> doing a magic trick for somebody. And that's just who he is as a person, as an entertainer. And that's, I think, why he has been such a compelling presence and not just the skeptical movement, but in pop culture. I mean, he's famous all over the world with people who don't necessarily identify as skeptics. Mm. And what sort of role do you think the skeptics can play politically? Or is it best they stay out of that realm? I think that there are issues that pop up in politics that skeptics definitely have a say in. Now, the problem with that is that different people in different countries have different rules that they have to follow, and there are different things that people can do. Uh, Here in Australia... Uh, you have been very successful with shutting down things like the power band people by pursuing consumer protection laws that don't necessarily exist in some place like the United States. Or if they do, it's a lot more difficult to get somebody put out of business. Um, that is maybe not something that people consider politics, but it is politics because it has to do with working within your legal system. And, uh, and I don't think, I think maybe that's possibly an area where skeptics have maybe fallen short is engaging in that system. We talk a lot. We write a lot of letters. We do a lot of blogs. We make a lot of podcasts. But there aren't that many of us who are actually trying to affect the the legal system from within, get our own lobbyists, for example, and Mm. influence politicians. There are some uh, political schisms within the skeptic movement. Uh, You have Penn and Teller there, very much libertarians. Mm. And uh, and libertarianism doesn't always go down with all skeptics. Yeah, it it certainly doesn't go down with me personally. (laughs) But I think that that stuff is sort of outside the realm of skeptics. I mean, if you watch Penn and Teller's show, it's a good show, but not everything that they cover is something that is that important to the skeptics movement as a whole. Um, But there are definitely core issues that we can all get around. We can all get around uh, or rally around, I should say, Um, things like keeping creationism out of a classroom, Um, things like tightening consumer protection laws so that we have a means to go after people who are advertising false products using false advertising. I mean, that that, these are simple things that that we could do. We could go after uh, quack medicine, things like that. Um, Just general consumer protection type things, which I think is kind of the core of skepticism is helping other people by protecting them from what they don't know isn't true. And what is your next project, your next specific outreach you're going to attempt? Uh, Right now, there's something pretty exciting. I can't go into too many details about it, but there is... You're making a haunted house show. Let's see. Randy, DJ Grothy, in a van driving around called the Grothy Machine, and they go and find that it's the old miner. Sure. Not the actual ghost, that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. It's always old man Smithers. We uh, we remove his rubber mask at the end of every episode. (laughs) Uh, and, uh, one of the people that we're going after, though, with the help of uh, Bob Blaskowitz, uh, who's a, a very, very prolific skeptic in the United States, uh, there is this, this doctor, uh, I use the term loosely, uh, named uh, Brzezinski, who, who lives in Texas. He's the, uh, he's the cancer doctor, apparently. Yeah, and he's been, he's been supposedly treating people with his unique form of cancer treatment that has never been proven to work and is costing families hundreds of thousands of dollars, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars for this treatment that's never been proven to work. And uh, we're working on a project to um, raise awareness about him and try to get him put out of business. And you have to be very careful because America, with lots of lawyers and one of the litigious countries in the world, you could find yourselves being sued easily. Uh, absolutely, but it's a risk that we all have to take. I mean, people can sue for anything. They, they have the ability to do that. And sometimes it costs a lot of money just to win a case. 
Um, but this is something that we have to be prepared to do. And this is why it's important to support the skeptics that are out there doing this work financially. I mean, uh, it might be crass to say that, but that's why people like the JRF and like other organizations that are similar to ours ask for donations. Uh, right now we're in the middle of our, what we call our season of reason, our end of year fundraising campaign. And this is what that money goes toward. Uh, we have the ability to engage in these projects because we have the financial resources to defend ourselves and to create new educational materials going forward. We, we wish you luck and we hope you've been reasoned, re- reasoned to an otherwise darkened land. Yes, this is a very dark, upside-down land and we're trying to spread as much reason as possible. But there's always... Boy, are, are we in trouble? We just got locked out. <laughs> 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 You'll see us shortly as a chalk outline. I was about to say, this is, this is how it starts. Now it's time for Dr. Rachie Reports with Dr. Rachel Dunlop. Hello listeners and welcome to Dr. Ratchy Reports. Well, I'm currently hiding in the green room at the Australian Skeptics National Convention here in Melbourne. So this week my report is coming to you from a segment I did on the television show called The Project, which appears on Channel 10 at 6.30 uh, weeknights in Australia. It's a very popular show and my report was um, following up from an Academy of Sciences booklet that was released this week. Um, It was in response to increases in epidemics of vaccine preventable diseases in Australia, which have been blamed partly on the lack of vaccination by some parents. And so some prominent scientists got together and decided to put together an easy to understand pamphlet that would provide parents with um, information where they could find out things about the ingredients in vaccines, the effectiveness of vaccines, and whether or not, um, if they had any myths they'd heard about vaccines, they would be debunked in this pamphlet. Now, interestingly, I was asked to go on the project to talk about this, and I specified to the producers that I would not appear if they had an anti-vaxxer on, because I wasn't interested in participating in a report that involved false balance. I was told by several producers that they had actually asked the anti-vaxxers to go on, but they only wanted to appear if they could appear live. So I'm not sure why they didn't want to go on unless they could go live. Perhaps they had a fear of being edited to make them look bad, or perhaps they wanted to go on after I'd appeared so that they could debunk what I had said. In any case... Uh, The project is always pre-recorded, so they didn't want to do a live cross, so the anti-vaxxers weren't on. In a small way, this is a victory for us, really, because it wasn't a false balance report. Even though it was quite short, it was succinct and to the point, and we didn't have any false balance. So here is a uh, recording of my appearance on the project on Channel 10 on November the 26th, 2012. Top immunisation specialists have launched a public campaign to strike back at what they say is misinformation being spread about the so-called dangers of vaccinations. In the early 20th century, we didn't have vaccination and you should visit the cemeteries of that time. Many hundreds of children died because we did not have vaccination. That has totally changed in our society. Between 1930 and 1960, Tens of thousands of Australians died from polio, a disease that's been wiped out solely because of mass immunisation against the disease. But experts say we're at risk of letting infectious diseases like whooping cough gain a foothold in our community once again because of a slide in vaccination rates. The number of people who object to having their children vaccinated has risen sixfold since 1999 to 1.44% and one in 12 Australian babies are not fully immunised. If it continues to drop, we are going to see diseases that have not circulated in Australia for a long, long time. An information booklet has been produced to counter some of the reasons people refuse to get themselves or their children jabbed, such as that immunisation is an unnecessary intervention to natural immunity and concerns over adverse reactions. These exaggerated claims of adverse events are nonsense. I'm not saying that there are never serious adverse events. But I am saying that the risk-benefit equation is just enormously positive. These days, 
parenting choices are largely left up to individuals. But when private choices have the potential to affect the health of many, how do we ensure that the most informed choices are being made? Dr Rachel Dunlop is a PhD medical researcher with a particular focus on the anti-vaccination movement. Rachel, this is one of the great frustrations of my medical career. How do we convince people that don't immunise their kids that they're doing something that is dangerous? It's a really difficult question, isn't it, Andrew? Thanks for having me on to talk about this. Um, I guess, well, this is part of the reason why the Academy of Sciences has put out this booklet today, so that they can lay out all the facts about vaccination. They can put it into simple language so parents can read this and they can uh, source any myths that they might have heard on the internet or through their friends and hopefully um, placate some of their fears. And in most cases, when people are told the information and are told the facts, they will change their minds and they will get their children vaccinated. You talked about the fear there. What is at the heart of this fear? What's the reasons behind it? Well, in, in, in most cases for parents who choose not to vaccinate, Carrie, it's because they've had some sort of experience with a child, possibly an adverse reaction, um, a side effect from a vaccine. And, and we must emphasise as scientists that every medical procedure has side effects. And some parents um, have these things happen and then they get scared of vaccines. And other things uh, really just come from conspiracy theories. There was this myth that autism was caused by vaccines. We know now that's not true, but that's still circulating around and it scares people. And that sort of stuff is scaring people into not vaccinating. Rachel, we've tried to encourage people to, uh, to vaccinate by punishing them through the tax system. That doesn't appear to have worked terribly well. Uh, should the people who don't vaccinate be prevented from sending their children to school? Yeah, Steve, that's a really difficult question because we don't want to punish the children, do we? Um, but we also have to be aware of the other people that could um, suffer as a result of children that contract um, vaccine-preventable diseases at schools. So by allowing children to go to school that um, haven't received all their vaccinations or haven't received any, it's putting the community at risk. Now, Rachel, you're talking a lot of sense, and there's one woman I hope who is watching is my 18-month-old daughter, because she had her vaccinations today, and she was very <laughs> anti them. And let's, I hope after watching you, she's changed her mind. Dave, she'll thank you in the future. She will. She was happy with the chocolate, I must admit. <laughs> That's uh, good. <laughs> information is a very powerful thing, and you're doing a wonderful job. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Andrew. Well, that was me appearing on the project on November the 26th, 2012. And until next time, this has been Dr. Rachie Reports. Marit. Og jeg er Kristin, og vi vil tipse dig som norsk lytter av The Skeptic Zone om skeptikermiljø i Norge. Det finns norske blogger og pubtreff og podcast, og foreningen Skepsis driver med slikt som disse du hører på nå. Centralt er skepsis.no, og her publiceres det dypskående artikler, en kalender over aktiviteter og lenker til nyttige resurser. Skepsis-bloggen oppdateres jevnlig, og det diskuteres heftig på forumet, så stikk innom og delta du også. Skepsis.no Join us now for drinking skeptically in the think tank. Uh, right, a, a hush has fallen over the audience now as the hundreds of thousands of people at the Penny Black next door just go nuts during the meetup that we've been having. A hush falls over and a microphone is passed to the man of the moment, Richard Saunders. Hello and welcome to this special Melbourne think tank. It's not the first Melbourne think tank we've had, but it's the first one this year, I might say, Maynard. This is a wonderful evening that uh, our friend Lindley has really put together and yourself. Hello. It's, hello. And we've snuck away from the main bar where there are lots of people with a select uh, group of people here to have a little think tank chatting session. And let me introduce our special guest for the think tank, James Randy. Hello there. I'm very happy to be here in such an august company. To say the least, I'm exaggerating now, of course, but uh, we'll, we'll see how august you can be in the next 10, 15 minutes. We'll see how we can do it. We've got a, a lovely group of people. They're all taking photographs for some reason. Let's, Maynard, let's go around the room and, and let people introduce themselves. Yes, and now we have a, a, uh, we have a, a, a neutral here. <laughs> yes, hi. Uh, my name is Roland. I'm from Switzerland. And I'm here in Melbourne for one year uh, for study reasons. 
And uh, I knew a lot about the skeptic zone and the Australian skeptics, and that's why I'm here. Ah, and you told me that there's no skeptical movement in Switzerland f- officially. That's not true, not anymore. Uh-huh. We have or now one. Not till now, yeah. Yeah, till now. We, we have uh, founded a new one. Uh, you'd find it under the website www.skeptica.ch. Skeptica written with a K. Hey, hey. <laughs> and of course, we have uh, Posty Lindley. Hello, how are you, Maynard? Fine. Now, how are you finding it so far? Very good. Very <laughs> hot. And I need another drink. drink. And we have Sir Gavin. Hello, Maynard. Hello, listeners. Uh, like myself, a No Agenda listener and a Skeptic Zone listener. I am also a producer of No Agenda and long-time skeptic. Yes. Yay. And private investigator. Oh. Yeah. So, so now you know why he's here. I don't believe anything that I can't see, hear, feel, smell, touch or photograph. Who we got here? John Carney. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why I'm here. <laughs> uh, I think you were here for the free drinks, John, wasn't it? Oh, that's it. That's Sweet. it, of course. <laughs> and, and just, just so I know what page you're on, what's your woo that really annoys you? Um, the woo that really annoys me is um, bad reporting, bad journalism, oh. bad science journalism in particular. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sceptical Steve Roberts from Victorian Skeptics. I live round here. So. <laughs> <laughs> you were just walking past and saw a crowd. Well, indeed, yeah, there's quite a crowd here, in fact. Yeah, I'm a bit zonked out because I've just ridden a motorbike from London to Vladivostok, but uh, I got the bike back this morning, so I'm you, kind of... You know you can fly now. <laughs> oh, can you? Oh, I wish they'd told me that, yeah. No, I can tell you, or sometime I'll do a show about all the superstitious beliefs of Outer Mongolia and so on, but uh, it's good to be here with all you guys in, here in Melbourne, my hometown, and... Uh, you're very welcome. Yeah, it's interesting, Steve, you should mention that part of the world. <clears throat> you were in Russia recently, right? Yep. And one, one of the very first times uh, I remember seeing much about uh, the amazing James Randi was a documentary that he took part in called Secrets of the Psychics, where he yes. went to Russia not long after uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union. And what a fascinating documentary that was. Uh, do you have vivid memories of that time, Randy? Yes, well, there was curly and photography and everything in that, wasn't oh, there? Oh, yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, it was an interesting period in history in general, of course, to everyone all around the world. But to me particularly for one aspect, they, they had been freed up all of a sudden. And they didn't know what the hell to do with it, you know. The, uh, the churches were suddenly filling up when they had been pretty well discouraged from from gathering crowds and such, but the churches were chock full right to the doors and the, to the windows, as a matter of fact. And uh, everybody who had any kind of crazy idea, like Carolyn Photography or any of these things that are so popular among the woo-woo crowd, as I refer to them, um, that suddenly took off. And it got away from the authorities and... Uh, I, I, I don't know what happened to it eventually, but it did sort of level out uh, at a high level of, of acceptance and, and belief in all kinds of strange, strange things. It was rather disturbing. You, of all the places and all the countries you've travelled to, is there one nation you find more suggestible than another one? No, not really. I get asked this question constantly, as you might imagine. But uh, it's just of a different degree or a different flavour. You know, in some places, they'll all be for psychic surgery, uh, for example, and uh, they accept it. And oh yes, it's 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 the way of medicine. That that's the future of medicine, right? And right next door, in another country, just uh, two miles over the border, they say, "Oh, psychic surgery? You no, know, that's total nonsense." No, but curling photography is the thing. There's no question <laughs> of that. Um, you were just telling me that Switzerland has done the opposite to most other. Uh, governments and they've actually enshrined complementary medicine into their system officially. Yes, unfortunately, that's that's one of the side effects of direct democracy. We had a couple of years ago a People's Initiative where they uh, introduced complementary medicine into the constitution, and that has, as a result, that government has now the government healthcare system has now to pay complementary and alternative medicine. Oh. Now, that's the, that's the opposite to the Australian and English government. Yes, yes. And that's probably one of the reasons why we started to, to come together and uh, organize ourselves. 
Now, Switzerland is known for this sort of thing, particularly in the complementary medicine uh, angle. Hahnemann, after after all, you know, he he grew up there pretty well, and he he founded homeopathy. That, that's a strange expression, founded homeopathy. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the words don't come easily. Now, now here's, here's an amazing coincidence you get from time to time. When you flew to Russia, and this is trivial knowledge, you flew with Swiss Air. <laughs> yes, but I didn't blame them. No, no, no. They were, they were my, my hosts after all, so I had to be polite. But, I, you know, I, I did have a, I must tell you, yeah, I'm compelled. There's no question of it. Uh, I was in uh, Copenhagen. Oh, I guess it was about two years ago. And um, I was taking a friend uh, to lunch. And I, right across a massive traffic, a real traffic jam in the middle of Copenhagen, I heard, Mr. Randy, Mr. Randy. And I looked around, and there's a fellow waving his, his hand in the air at me. And I figured, well, nobody knows I'm in town, really, but... He rushed through the crowd, almost got run over several times, and um, he rushed up to me, all breathless. He said, Mr. Randy, oh, he extended his hand, I shook his hand, he said, I, I want you to know, I'm a skeptic too. And I pulled a line on him, which, uh, well, it, he bought us lunch as a result of it, so I'll give you the line just in case you want to get a free lunch. Uh, I just looked him up and down very quietly. Uh, after he said, I'm a skeptic too, and I looked at him, I said... I doubt that. No, just to keep in character, you see. I had, I had to be in character. And, and he was so thrilled with that expression, he bought us lunch. So uh, I, I got his address, as a matter of fact. So if you go to Copenhagen, I, I'm sure that you'll... Uh, he's good for it. Oh, he's good for it, I'm sure, yes. Now, I was just going to ask the, the crowd here in general. Now, we're all here, of course, for uh, the Australian Skeptics National Convention. How important do you think, and I know... Uh, Tam uh, in in the United States has been going for what well, will be eleven years next year. I think. Yes, I yeah. So, yeah. And in Australia, we've been having conventions now for twenty eight years. I think it is. Man, how important do you think, just around the room, it is to have these gatherings? Is it preaching to the converted, or do you think it's more important than that, well, Lindley? Uh, yeah, Lindley. I find it more fun to get out and meet people. Um, it's important, obviously, to get the word out. There are people who are young or who have just come into the scene, young or old, and it's good to sort of pass on the message that scepticism and science is the way to to view the world. Uh, You can't sort of rely on psychic bullcrap or whatever (laughs) sort of rubbish that's out there. Uh, And also a fun way of just meeting people... Uh, all that sort of stuff. Well, Gavin, you've been to a couple of these things. What do you make of them? I love going to skeptic camps whenever I can. Um, my my schedule's fairly busy being a private investigator, but I love meeting like-minded people, like Lindy said, um, enjoying their company and finding a new woo to hate. And I'm, lo- and, I, and I'm looking over there at Lucky 88 is out of order. Irony, irony, love it. Yeah, we're, we're in a pokies joint. The pokey venues, yeah. And I, I do, I just love meeting the like-minded people and, and, yeah, just using the scientific method in my, you know, in my daily life. That's, I have to. Well, actually, as a private investigator, you have to be sceptical about stuff, but also the law isn't always logical. So you've got that dichotomy going on. The law is an ass, uh, but if you treat it as an ass and you treat it like a child... So that whatever you have to prove, you prove it from the from the ground floor right up to the penthouse. Um, I've been I've been um, quizzed in court back in the day when I was in the federal police. I took photographs, old chemical film photographs of a man carrying a package contained about twenty kilos of methamphetamine. And two years later, when I had to prove those photographs in court, we had to take the negatives and the and the prints and the man in the suit was not the man in the death metal t-shirt with long hair um, but it was still the same man and it's 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 that scientific proof that yes and i'll put my hand on the bible don't don't tell anyone i put my hand on the bible i swore the oath that 
um, you know, I took that photograph and this, these are my photographs that I produced to the court. And I, I found, unfortunately, that uh, if you took the affirmation, juries would not give an, mu- as much weight to, really? to your evidence as it. So I would I would pick up the Bible and I would say I would swear I swear by Almighty God that the evidence that I should give to the court in this case should be the truth, the whole truth, and anything but the truth. Yeah. And you, you would have found that too, Randy. That, that that there is a bit of a bias against that in American courtrooms as well. Is that correct? Oh, absolutely. And by the way, see, my ambition. I'm a rascal. There's no question about it. I was born a rascal. It's in the DNA, and I, I'm not responsible for it. It's my parents. You have to go after them. But, you see, what I would do is I would get a copy of a pornographic novel, and I would put a cover of a Bible on it, and I would use that for the oath. Uh, but but that's, that's my nature. But get, to get serious now. You're a troublemaker. It starts with the beard, and it goes from there. <laughs> but to get serious, folks, uh, this, 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 I think, is important. When we do the amazing meeting in Las Vegas every year, I, I spot people who I figure have something to say to me. And I let them have the opportunity of sort of getting me aside. And in many cases, th- this is more often than you might imagine, I will get people bursting into tears and telling me I had to come to this meeting because... You know, it, it made a, good deal, a great deal of difference to me. I, I didn't realize before there were other people who believe the way I do that this is so much bullcrap or whatever. Uh, they, they break down. They break down and they look around them. They're, it's like they've just gotten into paradise somehow. But it's very serious to a lot of these people. And those people always show up in the subsequent years. Every year they they go out of their way to make sure they're going to be there. And I've developed a little coterie of these these folks who we rescued. We really did rescue them from some sort of insanity. They didn't realize that there were people uh, like the fellow who says, I'm a skeptic too, you know. I doubt that. But uh, there are people like this who really need this kind of support. It's extremely important to them. And sometimes I get very heartfelt letters, too, that run on for several pages from people I've never heard of before, never heard their names, and they just find an address for me. This is very, very important. And that's why a meeting uh, such as we're at right at this very moment can be very important to a lot of folks it really supports them. And have you noticed this, uh, John and Stephen, for meetings like this in Victoria? I think so. I think another um, important thing about <clears throat> uh, sceptics groups and meetings in particular, well, not in particular, but um, is the this is the source of um, of activism against things like anti-vaccine groups. I mean, mm. you know, mm. it's so so important, and I don't think you know the media or even the scientific establishment is really geared to, to act against groups like that. I think you know, interest groups like sceptics groups are very well placed to kind of run grassroots campaigns against you know, people who are pitching harmful, dangerous woo. Yeah, and Steve, you, you, and you, yeah, you've been around for uh, a few years now. Few years, yeah, yeah. yeah, although James is somewhat older. Uh, a couple of years I'm old. Older, I'm, I'm older than everybody in the world. You know? <laughs> Methuselah, yeah. Um, yeah, look, um, I've been to many conferences uh, since 1987, um, and it's, it's important to meet up. It's not, not really important to have the conference and hear the speakers, because we know, we know each other. We know what they're going to say. Uh, we know, we, and even if it's new to us, we'll, we'll, we'll know the attitude already. It's very, very important to meet up and actually to further this on the web with you know, e- email and Facebook pages and so on to actually get to know the other sceptics and form a sort of web of, um, of, of camaraderie um, that, that's really important to have in place because as, as John said the opposition groups we have are organised and we're not organised we're all it's like herding cats really but um, you know, we're up against you know, the anti-vaccination mob the biblical fundamentalist mobs they're thoroughly organised societies with a, a priest and dogma and no dissent internally and they're, they're quite, you know, quite hard to oppose on some things. So we, we need all, all the strength we can find uh, while, remaining, uh, while retaining our individual uh, th- um, thoughts and attitudes you know, and personalities. And this is a, a very important way of doing it, to actually meet people in the flesh that you've only seen uh, on, on Facebook. 
I'm holding up a photo of Brian Dunning of Skeptoid on a stick now. That that, intimidating? That's intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> that's intimidating. Hello, I'm Brian Dunning. Of... I've got a deep voice. But then there's one of Maynard next to it, yes, and that's, 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 that's quite to sing funny. Off it, yeah. <laughs> oh, we've got to hold them up. Oh, we've got to hold... Just a quick photo, and then, it, then it'll be back to Richard. <laughs> yes. now, now, Richard, what are you uh, hoping for? I'll give you the yeah. what, 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 our next point. What well, I'm doing? hoping for. I'm hoping for world peace and the adoption of the scientific method. No. Yes. I, I, look, well, I know... One, one will follow from the other. One would, <laughs> might follow from the other. Well, a piece of it easier. I'm, I'm sure... Uh, look, I'm really looking forward to this weekend and, and all the, the yeah. sessions that are coming up. Uh, I know that uh, James Randi is visiting a school tomorrow. A really important thing to... to, to uh, that's because they've got Spivetti Bolognese at the tuck shop. That's why he's yeah. going out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Apart from that. Nice meal. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Well, I think we've all learned something this afternoon. Um, m- most other people more than me, because I'm not particularly bright. Um, but uh, what do you think, uh, what are you looking forward to, to finish off? Well, I, I, I must tell you about an Alice who I know. Uh, now, we were talking about the, the feminine angle and this sort of thing. This Alice is a person who, I, a very, very good friend of mine. I worked with Alice for a long time on a special tour. And I must say that... Uh, Alice has turned into a fundamentalist freak. And, uh, but Alice's father was a Mormon minister, after all. I'm speaking, unfortunately, of Alice Cooper. And uh, I worked with Alice. I did a whole tour with Alice. We got along very well. We still get along very, very well. But uh, we don't argue about religion. He knows better than that. Do, do you think it's because of his wild, crazy days it's almost like an antidote or some way that the pendulum had to swing back that way again? It might very well be. I've al- always thought of that, but I don't want to get into an argument with him. He's still a good friend of mine, and I want to keep him that way. I think he's a beautiful man. I think he's still such a wonderful man. If I see him now, I just don't believe he's that Alice Cooper. He's That's him. Yeah, that's, him. that's him. Oh, yes. Wonderful. I love him. <laughs> I'm a big Alice Cooper fan, but I'm more of a fan of the man who discovered Alice Cooper, Frank Zappa. <laughs> that was my, my brother and my two nephews who were both under five. Happy birthday. Oh, very good. You can't pass that. I'm sorry. Tore me away from the bar, basically. Let's wrap it up, Mina. Can you just wrap it up? Okay. Well, we've certainly been having a bit of fun here in this very small room off a side lane in Brunswick Street with, uh, with Randy and Richard and uh, Stephen and John and Gavin and I can see Lindley and I can see... Roland. Roland as well. And, and thank you for joining us here on this very special episode of The, the Drunk Tank. Yay! Yay! Amen to that. Amen to that? <laughs> <coughs> Did you see that UFO sighting that made the news? What did that latest study about alternative treatments really say? Is this photo making the rounds real or a hoax? Doubtful News is a unique website featuring news about pseudoscience, the paranormal, anomalies, and questionable claims framed with a skeptical view. Come visit doubtfulnews.com every day for news about cryptozoology, conspiracies, shams, scams, and more. Follow us on Twitter at Doubtful News. Critical thinking is essential in assessing today's news. Doubtful News helps you decide, can you really believe this stuff? Richard? Yes, Stephanie. That is a fabulous, fabulous show. Wasn't that fun? It was good. The convention is just going off. It is, and I love the the bits from uh, Maynard's meet and greet down uh, there in Melbourne on my birthday. That ca- was so much fun. You can count on Maynard. It, it's one thing about him. He'll always come through with the goods, and it, this stuff pops out of his brain you just can't even imagine is even sitting in anyone's brain. Well, let me tell you something. that You know he went to TAM, of course, and all the listeners know he went to TAM. Ah, yes. But TAM was, what, six months, months ago, ago or something yeah, like that? yeah. Every week since then, there have been reports from Maynard <laughs> from Tam. <laughs> He's unstoppable. It gives you some idea of what uh, yeah, the, yeah. The, the quantity of work he uh, was doing output, in Las yeah. Vegas. It That's was what I'm incredible. saying. His brain is just like this. End, it's, it's almost a stream of consciousness. It just mm. never ends. But it's all good stuff. 
It's amazing stuff. Yeah. And speaking about good stuff, and I keep promising the listeners this, I keep teasing them, that I'm almost finished the great script. Oh, the adventure! Oh, you're still oh, nearly there. You've nearly seen, there. you've seen it. Oh, you've, I've seen drafts. Yeah, you've seen drafts. Oh, of it. it's looking good. And I'm just coming to the, the the climax now, where I'm trying to wrap up all the loose ends and get the oh, villains there and the heroes yeah. happening. So, I hope in very early in the new year we'll all get together and, and we'll be for record, a record. We'll do the big record. Hey, 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 hey! I Originally, I think that was going to be done for show 150. Ah, oh, yeah, but, but Richard, look, <laughs> honestly, a, a radio play in in this day and age, it's not something you can just churn out like a tweet, like a tweet. It's not. No, you don't it's just not. you don't tweet radio plays. You you construct them, you refine them, and you you create them and craft them. You could tweet a radio play. It'd be very short. <laughs> very short. <laughs> you know, you... Door opens. Hello. Yeah, so... no. End. End. Yeah. Yeah, no. 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 We're looking forward to that. That's going to be huge. Sometime. I hope yeah. so. Well. Well. In the meantime. In the meantime, I've got some more. Uh, Reporting to do from Melbourne. Mm-hmm. I'm going to grab some more reports, more interviews while I'm down here. Yeah, go which for Which will it. be in a few days. <laughs> Temporal mechanics. Yes. Uh, you're going to get a few more for the next couple of uh, couple of episodes. I think Maynard's probably got the ne- uh, some for the next year, but that's Maynard. Yeah, probably has. But uh, I, again, thank you to the listeners for, uh, for tuning in once again. Thank you. How is the listenership going, Richard? Up. Up. <laughs> it's, it's always going up, <laughs> Stefan. Go. I'd have to check the figures, but... Um, I, I, I guess we're something shy of two million downloads. I had something like that. Okay, so we're somewhere between Oprah and Charles Manson. Yeah, you <laughs> could put it like that. <laughs> That's good. Another, another <laughs> classic from Stefan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, I, hopefully you'll let me back in here another time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you again sometime soon, eh? All right, Stephen. Thanks right. for letting me come by the old headquarters again. Oh, yes. We'll see you next time. And thank you, listeners. We'll see you in the next zone. See you in the next zone. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Skeptic Zone. Visit our website at www.skepticzone.tv for comments, contacts, and extra video reports.